Asahi Linux is the primary way to use Linux on an M1 Mac. This is where everything is being tested, everything is being developed, and everything is, you know, known to work, or at least known to work as much as reverse engineered drivers and firmware can be known to work. This is the intended state of the project. But it's not always supposed to be the place you have to go. Eventually, they want to see a lot of their work being upstream into the Linux kernel and having various distros out there shipping their tooling. One such distro that wants to take up this job is Manjaro Arm. So the other day, they added four new packages into their repo. Linux Apple Silicon-6.0 RC7-1 Linux Apple Silicon Headers 6.0 RC7-1, M1N1, and U-Boot Apple Silicon 2022.07-1. So these two parts here are just involved in the boot process, and this is the custom kernel made for running Linux on the M1 Max. And they announced it with this tweet. Some is coming to Manjaro Linux Arm. And just like how they didn't proofread the tweet, they also didn't proofread the package, because this is Manjaro we're talking about, and it doesn't matter if we're talking about x86 or we're talking about ARM, something is going to go wrong. So, a few days after this post, Asahi Linux replied to the tweet. Note, Manjaro Linux are shipping an unstable kernel build newer than what we ship to end users, which is broken on some platforms. We have not been contacted by them regarding this Apple Silicon release. But Asahi Linux isn't against other people shipping their kernels and shipping their tooling. As I said here, if you're a distro adding Apple Silicon support, please talk to us so we can help you do it right. We want everyone to have a good experience, but we can't help you if you just pull our package builds without notice. For example, Fedora is one of the distros doing it right. Someone asked, I hope Fedora adds Apple Silicon support soon, and us he replies by saying, we are working with Fedora developers on that. Now Manjaro did have something to say about all this. We are currently only tested our version on a MacBook Air M1, and stated that also on the readme file on the development project at SourceForge. We will contact us here Linux team soon to establish a good development relationship. I really hope I don't need to explain this, but most people when they install a package, don't read the readme, they don't go and look at the source forge, they don't go and look at the source code, they install the package and go from there. So shortly after this, Manjaro started to revert their changes. The first thing they did is basically took out those updated versions and swapped back to a known stable working version, 5.19.0-5. And then following that, they did something kind of weird. They introduced the next version of the kernel. So this is like a future updated version, which is probably not going to be stable and you should only use at your own risk. But then shortly after that, they also removed those as well. So right now in Manjaro, these RC kernel packages are available. Linux Apple Silicon, which is the actual kernel itself, and then the headers package, which is the C headers to let things, you know, interact with the kernel, both of which are 5.19.0.5. Now, as for things like M1N1, the RC team didn't take any issue with this version being shipped. So what's the big deal here? Why does it matter so much which version of the kernel they're using when this is a completely valid release of the Linux kernel? Right now, there are actually versions of the kernel that are newer than what even Manjaro were shipping. Well, Hector Martin, the guy who actually runs the Asahi Linux project, went into great detail about why this is such an issue. Okay, since Manjaro decided to ship one of our broken kernels, I should clarify how I do development on the Asahi kernel. Tags don't mean anything. I tag stuff all the time, it just means it probably builds. Those are for our developers to test. So looking at the Asahi Linux kernel repo, you'll see things like RC6 and then RC6-1, or RC5 is a great example. RC5-1, RC5-2, no-3, and then RC5-4. You as a distro maintainer, you as a user, 
should probably not be randomly picking and choosing which kernel you want to be using. There is no guarantee that any of the ones that you go and pick are going to be stable. The only people that should be doing that are people who know they're going to be testing, like, say, you know, users who want to go and help out, or the developers. And after I tag something, I update our package build and make a proper build. So this right here is the package build repo. If we go through the commits, we'll see that most of it is just bumping it up to whatever the latest version is going to be. But these packages don't get pushed to the end user, us he repo. They get pushed to us he dev first. Once we have something known, good, and without major aggressions, then we push to the end user. So all of these random package builds are just to make it easier for developers to install that package. The issue with Manjaro is right now referring to when they had that really new version, right now, Asahi Dev, which is what Manjaro shipped, plus a completely untested RC bump on top, is known broken on the M1 Ultra. Our devs know this, I'll fix it for the next package, but I'm not in a rush. So you may have noticed that the package that they shipped was RC7. There is no RC7 in the RC Linux repo. So they took the patches applied to the RC Linux kernel, applied them to a different kernel, and then shipped that one. It wasn't even the latest version available from RC Linux. Pulling nonsense like this is the reason that things like don't ship it exists. This is an open letter basically saying stop shipping applications where you've taken the latest version and then applied a bunch of untested patches to it and then expect that everything is just going to work. Saying you tested it on one system doesn't matter because the devs may know that it doesn't work or doesn't work on that specific version and are trying to sort it out still. And the funny thing about this is this is mainly focused on the mobile side, but still about Manjaro. So you can't just randomly RC bump kernels, and RC being a release candidate, this is a version that may end up being the next version of the kernel. So these RC bumps can introduce regressions. We had one of those already with RC4, I think. So no, throwing RC bump patches on top of our tree is not safe either. 6.0 upstreamed several large parts of the audio code, and that was a major bump for our downstream kernels since the upstream version had diverged from what we had, which is why we aren't shipping 6.0 base kernels to users yet, but it will come soon. In the end, once the us he dev package repo is in a known good state, I sync it over wholesale to the us he repo, and that's when users get it. Our installer images are also built from dev packages so I can make them as release candidates and push everything together. There are other considerations for distros too. The firmware situation is in flux. I actually have a complete revamp of how we handle vendor firmware planned, which we came up with during discussions with the Fedora folks. What Manjaro are shipping right now for vendor firmware setup is a major change I made, which I then decided to redo once again, and which we also haven't shipped to users. Does it work? Probably. But I doubt anyone there understands any of this, they just grabbed our package builds. That is a very, very important point. This isn't just a random kernel. This isn't just a file manager. This isn't something that your average everyday open source developer understands the code of. This is reverse engineered driver and firmware nonsense that you need a very specific set of knowledge to understand what is being done and understand if regressions are actually being introduced. One really great example of this is in the early stages of the audio code. So during this early period, like, you know, a lot of early code, it's kinda buggy. And the code had a slight issue, where if you use the speakers incorrectly, you could potentially physically damage them. Which is a problem. This is the kind of stuff that's possible when you start introducing regressions into this low level code. You can start breaking stuff, and that has happened in the past with us here, and this is why Hector is very specific about the versions that go out to users. I know that Manjaro wants to open up a good relationship with us here, and I hope that going forward into the future, that is what is done, and they only ship the versions that us he says are safe to ship. But 
in the end, sometimes it is not better to just make a mistake and then ask for forgiveness. Sometimes it is much better to just do things right from the start. I know the Manjaro is such an easy topic to make fun of, but don't misconstrue that as me saying that you're a bad person for using Manjaro. If you use Manjaro, go ahead. It's your computer. I don't really care. But from my perspective and the perspective of many people in the Linux space, Manjaro at this point is basically the jester of the Linux distros. We are waiting for them to do something funny again so that we can all sit around and laugh. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, Scribe, Starring, Bear, Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.